<clears throat> okay, so this is unit five, gases, and this is the first lecture in this series, and so what we're going to do really is focus primarily on the properties of gases here. So the only objective we're going to be applying is uh, looking at the properties of gases and being able to explain them and convert them, um, uh, particularly, particularly to SI units. So we're going to start looking at the properties of gases, um, and it's important to remember that for most of this unit, we are going to be dealing with ideal gases, and we will discuss the difference between ideal gases and what really happens in life or real gases later in the unit. Um, and then we get into how to measure and how to monitor pressure. So in general, remember in unit one, when we're talking about the properties of matter, we said that a gas is going to take up uh, the shape and the volume of, its con of a container. Um, those particles of a gas are very, very far apart, and they are in constant, rapid, random motion. Now, because they're so far apart, you can easily compress them. Unlike the solid or the gas, or the um, the solid or the liquid, when we were talking about the subway or the um, Black Friday shopping, here we can actually compress this into a very small area if we wanted to. Now, all of the mo uh, motion from these particles means that they are constantly pounding into the walls of the container, and that's going to exert a force on the surroundings. Now, the great thing about gases is because they're in rapid motion, and constant motion, they give us instant observations. They give us instant access to see what is occurring, and it allows us to really evaluate what's happening in a different situation. There we go. Now, the first thing that we're really going to talk about in terms of gases is pressure. Now, just like the atmospheric pressure is um, constantly pressing on us, the pressure of gas is, is constantly exerting um, on either the surroundings um, of a container or on basically anything it bombards into. And so pressure is just defined as some force over some area. Now, technically, the units for pressure are uh, Pascal, which is going to have units Newton per meter squared. We generally don't use that in chemistry. That's more of a physics term. In chemistry, we tend to talk more about atmospheres or millimeters mercury. Um, millimeters mercury and tor are interchangeable terms. Um, they mean exactly the same thing. So while um, technically we could talk about 101,325 pascals is equal to one atmosphere, um, what we really care about more, and I think it'll pop up, is that this one atmosphere is equal to 760 millimeters mercury. Um, we could also say that it's 760 tor because millimeters mercury and tor are equal. Now, that 760 may seem arbitrary, but the fact is when we were first measuring atmospheric pressure, um, we used a barometer. And the original barometer was just an open petri dish like this, where you had liquid mercury um, sitting in that dish. Then you had a tube, like here, that's got a vacuum, and you invert it. Um, you guys kind of do something similar in lab at some point um, earlier in the semester, I think. Um, but the idea here is that whatever pressure from the atmospheric gases is pressing down, is going to cause the mercury to rise up this tube until the pressure inside, pushing down from there, is going to be equal to the pressure of the atmospheric gases. And when that happens, you can actually read the height that the mercury climbs. 
And so it just so happens that this is 760 millimeters mercury at one atmosphere. And that is where we got that conversion from. Now, a couple of things. The reason we used mercury, or not we, but they, is because mercury is very, very dense. It allows um, a very small overall reading, okay? Um, 760 millimeters mercury, really that <sighs> translates into about 76 centimeters or about 30 inches. And so this tube was 30 inches. If they had had to have used water, it would have been something um, much higher. I think water is something like 13 times less dense than mercury. And so you're looking at something like uh, 395, 400 inches tall-ish, okay? And so that kind of tube you're looking at, you're going to need basically a stairwell to do this. So they used mercury because it was very dense, and at the time, mercury was pretty popular to use anyway. Um, if you ever heard the, the phrase mad hatter or mad as a hatter, um, it came be around because they used to use liquid mercury when making hats. Um, it's a metal, so it holds its shape very well, and it's liquid, so you could actually put it into the brim of a hat so that it would um, maintain its shape. The problem with mercury is that the fumes are pretty toxic. So as you breathe them in, you so slowly get mercury poisoning, which drives you insane. Now, even though we don't really use that type of barometer anymore, there are other ones that you will see um, around pretty often. I couldn't find a picture of the one that I use for our tires, and I know it's kind of old, but generally it looks something like this. It's got a little nozzle that you can put into the um, the air valve on the tire, and then inside here it's got a ruler, and when you release air from here, it pushes until the ruler comes out, and it can tell you basically what pressure is in your tires. <clears throat> they have a little bit fancier ones that actually read a gauge um, for bike tires, and then very similar ones for blood pressure cuffs. Now, um, it's just an idea of when we read pressure, we're reading the pressure that is observed in the container. And you might want to remember that for later in the unit. <clears throat> so the local weather station reports the pressure as 30.59 inches mercury. Convert, convert to millimeters mercury tor and atmospheres. Now, I probably didn't say this earlier, but atmospheres is just what we typically think of as atmospheric pressure. Um, now, in general, there it is, um, this one atmosphere is usually going to happen um, at sea level and basically at room temperature. Usually our atmospheric pressure is going to be right around 1. Um, now, if you go up a mountain, you're going to get a little lower. It's going to drop a little bit if it's going to rain. Um, but for the most part, it tends to be around 1. Now, and if you're taking into account the fact that we really are only a few miles from sea, we should be at sea level. And so hopefully this is close to 1. But let's go ahead and check. So we're starting off with inches of mercury. <clears throat> and we're looking for, let's just go with millimeters mercury first. By the way, guys, there it is. Um, of these three conversion factors, this is the only one that I expect you to memorize. One atmosphere is equal to 760 millimeters mercury. So you may not know how to go from inches to centimeters. Hopefully you do. But I think that's usually something that we give on a test anyway if we happen to include inches anywhere near a test. But we can go from inches to centimeters because we know that one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. Then <clears throat> there's two ways to go from centimeters to millimeters. 
We can do it in one step because one centimeter has 10 millimeters. Um, and if you've ever seen a ruler, you kind of hopefully remember that. The other way we, would, we could do this was we could go from centimeters to millimeters, um, excuse me, from centimeters to meters and then back to millimeters. Either way is going to be fine. Um, in fact, let's do it that way. We'll go from centimeters to meters and then back to millimeters mercury. We know that every meter has 100 centimeters and every meter has a thousand millimeters. So we have this three-step problem which is technically longer than I like on an exam but for here it's fine. So we have 30.59 inches mercury. We know every time we have one inch, so we're putting inches down here to cancel, we get 2.54 centimeters. Every time we have one centimeter, oops, I'm sorry, every time we have a hundred centimeters, we have one meter, and one meter is the same as having a thousand millimeters. And so at this point, we're going to go ahead and plug it into our calculator where we have uh, 30.59 times 2.54 times 1,000 divided by 100. And you get something like 770, uh, we'll round up to 7 um, millimeters mercury. So we have our millimeters mercury. We know that that is exactly the same as Tor, which means we also have 777 Tor. So that covers these two units. Now if we want to convert to atmospheres, we have millimeters mercury, and we're going to memorize that every time we have 760 millimeters mercury, we get one ATM. So here we have 777 millimeters mercury. Dividing that by 760 is going to give us one atmosphere. And it should give us something like 1.02 uh, atmospheres. So basically close to one, which is a realistic expectation since it's from the weather station. That is it for this unit. Um, generally for a test question, I'm only going to expect you to go from uh, one or two steps. I won't give you all three or four. Okay? Um, 